Our first talk today is going to be Ronald Maravanyika. Um, he is from Zim and runs an organization called Zimbo Pi that helps teach girls to code. And he's going to be speaking to us today about building an API in complete darkness, which we are looking forward to. Take it away. All right. Uh, can you hear me? Cool. Uh, sorry about that. So, yeah, um, my name is Ronald, and um, um, I'm a software engineer at a company called NTT Limited. It's, um, it's a fairly new company uh, because there was a major of um, a lot of other companies um, within um, that company. Um, sorry, let me fix this. Okay. Uh, I'm a technical director for a nonprofit called ZimboPi. I'm also a managing member for um, the Python Foundation software. I'm also a member of uh, Django Software Foundation, and I help out with organizing Django Girls. So my talk is all about uh, launching a library. In this case, it's um, a Python API client in total darkness. So. Um, Let's, um, what for what you should expect. The first part of my talk will be pretty much uh, for beginner level. Um, we'll do the topic breakdown, then uh, define some terms, and then I'll explain to you um, the case study of uh, this talk. Then the second part is um, media to senior level. Uh, we're going to look at degree. Uh, how to use APIs, um, cookie cutter, documentation, and um, all that stuff. So, um, I'm not a native English speaker, but uh, when I was being taught English, I was taught to answer questions. When you're answering questions, you have to highlight keywords in a question, right? So, this is my topic, and I've highlighted what I call keywords in, um, in my topic, which is launching library and darkness. So throughout the, um, the talk, I will be explaining um, what these mean individually. Cool. Um, launching, I'm referring to pushing to PyPy. How many people know PyPy? Cool, awesome. Uh, then the library, I'm talking about uh, a Python package. Then the darkness part, I mean like literally darkness, like there's no light. That's the darkness that I'm talking about. Right, so let me first explain about uh, darkness. I am from Zimbabwe and last year we suffered a, a drought. What that means is we, we had no water. And our electricity is mainly powered from a hydro power station. So it means the dam levels were low. And that means we had no enough electricity to, to power the country. Um, we have five power stations in the country. And um, the first figures are the expected uh, figures that we, we usually get when everything is working well. But uh, we went through some tremendous changes uh, at the beginning of this year. And unfortunately, that was the um, part where I got a new job through that period. Uh, so the first one, we were getting 120 megawatts. Um, we're now getting 0, 90, we're getting 0. Uh, that one is 190, we're only getting 14. 920, we are now getting 320. And uh, the last one, it had gone down to 325, not 725. So you can imagine um, the power which was getting into the grid, it wasn't enough for everyone. So 
the, the, the government had to take measures so that everyone at least has um, electricity. So what that means was um, we had 17 hour load sheddings um, and I work remotely. So the darkness parts, this is what I mean. So during the day, these are the pictures that you see. This is, this is where we live, right? And I'm a software engineer. I need internet. I need electricity. Right, to the other um, uh, keyword, which is library. Library, I just mean literally a, um, a, a Python library. Uh, by definition, it is a collection of functions and methods that allows you to perform many actions without actually writing the code. Uh, then in API, how many people are familiar with APIs? Cool, awesome. Uh, so I'll skip that. Right, let's get into details. Um, there is a platform called Degrid. How many people are familiar with Degrid? Cool. So Degrid is a learning platform um, which leverages content from other content providers. So what that means is degree has got um, the base structure of the learning content and then they fetch them from plural site, from top Python and um, all other content providers. So what we are trying to do with um, uh, the new company that I'm working for, NTT, is we want to create a culture of learning and we found out that degree was the best uh, way for our employees to, to learn. But we wanted to manage the content from the grid ourselves. So all those uh, aspects that are provided by the grid, so from videos, you get books, you get articles, and stuff like that. But in our hiring process, we, we now want to to develop talent rather than um, hiring talent. So managing the grid will be managing the performance that um, individuals are, are doing while they are learning um, to help out with, um, with recruitment, right? So we asked the grid to uh, develop an API on top of um, their platform so that we can leverage um, a lot of things. So using APIs, there are a lot of things that you can use, but this is pretty much as a, at a basic level, right? Um, we are a company of 40,000 people and you can really use Postman to, to do something useful with that. But anyway, let's uh, take a look at um, how we can use um, Postman. So normally APIs, they come with um, different uh, authentication methods. Um, specifically, the grid, it came with um, authentication 2.0. Uh, that's, um, it requires the client ID and the secret key. It also requires um, what they call the scope. So this is the basic level of all the things that you need to have for you to be able to use that API. But all those um, keys, they are supposed to be secret, otherwise everyone else you can access the, the data, right? So the grid provides um, those things to them. So just setting up, um, this is a screenshot for, uh, unfortunately it's not that clear. It's a screenshot of how you can use um, an API um, using Postman. You have to specify the grant type, the client ID, uh, then the client secret, and also the scope. So the scope refers to um, different modules within uh, the API itself. So as I said, degree, they've got a lot of things. 
So they can say there's a module for users, there's a module for videos, there's a module for, for courses. So depending on what you want to use that at a particular time, you can um, define it on, on the scope. So for example, you want to access um, the user data, you, you define that through um, the scope. And the good thing with Postman is it provides um, a section where you can uh, uh, get the code without actually doing anything for a number of languages, Python included. And for Python, it goes down to differentiate different libraries that you can, you can use for that. So if you click on that button and then ask it to give you the code for Python requests, um, Postman is smart enough to give you the code. So the payload just refers to stuff that you have to pass through to the API. Um, so in this case, in the initialization of, um, of the API, you have all that stuff and that's the same as what we, what we were seeing before. And then um, on the header, Postman with uh, the authentication that we have, Postman will give you more things uh, than what he had actually defined for. For example, there was no um, content length or uh, the caching control when we passed in the data, but Postman realizes that at some point you have to, to pass that if you need to. Right, so this is great, but we need to build our own platform. So this is just sort of a starting level. Uh, now let's let's discuss a bit about request. Request referring to um, you see that first line when you are importing request. This is what we are referring to. Um, request is great, uh, but we don't want to use it as recommended by um, by Postman. Is that we need to use um, session. And what a session means, it means if you say request dot request, you get a session within um, the, the, the session uh, library. And then a session is, is good because it, um, it allows you to, to, to do multiple requests while it's the, 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 the TCP is, um, is still open. Um, this is such an important feature since we want to do automation and stuff. And um, this um, client will be used by 40,000 people, uh, not necessarily at a particular time, but maybe at a particular time we have 3,000 or, or so. So um, there's a gentleman called Anthony Shaw. He did a very good, um, documentation on um, on uh, on requests you can um, look that with um, through that link if you want more details so yeah let's go to the library um, as I explained before I had no electricity so I needed the fastest way to um, uh, tackle this challenge uh, because I only had my laptop would hold five hours. So it means in the 17 hours a day that I don't have electricity. The five hours I have electricity, I have to maximize um, that time. So I used the uh, cookie cutter. How many people are familiar with cookie cutter? Okay, so cookie cutter, it's like, um, it's a template for various things. They have got um, a lot of things. There is a template for creating a Django project. There is a template for um, creating a package. So initially when you initialize cookie cutter, it asks you for a lot of things, including uh, your PyPy account, your read the docs account and 
stuff like that. So when you pass all that data within cookie cutter, it automatically generates a lot of things for you without you actually doing anything. So the basic structure of our um, cookie cutter is, um, is shown there. Um, there is a lot of useful stuff that um, that cookie cutter gives you, including um, trivial, the license, the history, all that stuff. It's it's really great, and it allows you. It also sets up um, the the basic structure for you to push to 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 PyPy, and you do that in I don't know in five minutes and that's great because I had no electricity remember so yeah um, it also allows you to um, to get access to your, to your documentation uh, Sphinx I use Sphinx for my documentation Sphinx is it's perfect it's like writing code you see um, as we as we move on so I use the um, cookie cutter as I said so after getting the, the basic structure, it was now about initializing the, the API itself. And remember what I said about, um, about the API, that it, um, it has different access endpoints. So depending with uh, the, the authentication method that, that you are using, this process might be different, but you can use it as, as a basic structure. Like I said, uh, the grid use authentication 2.0, uh, meaning it's client ID and then there is scope. So what I did was I created a base object and then I had to initialize the initial connection to, to the API. The host just refers to uh, the initial endpoint um but there are two initial endpoints there is one for getting a token and there is another one for actually using the api so the one that says um token request url that's um the one to get um, the token so that you can actually use um the api then the best url is actually for using an api so if you want to access users um, we would be using on the base URL, it would be API dot um, degree, and that's um, uh, get, getting access to, to the API. But again, like I said, I prefer using sessions because of the reasons that I mentioned. So you pass through your data. It's just like similar as what Postman gave you. So Postman already gave you that, and all I had to do was translate it into Python code. So all that stuff Post Postman it gave me, but now I'm just making it handy so that I can use it more and more, and more other people can use it. You can you are defining the header. Session gives you um, uh, headers that you can you can update. So authentication 2.0. The initial codes that you get from the grid, which are your client ID and your client secret, are not actually the, the, the key that you use to access the API, but they are just keys to give you a key to access the API. So when you get the key, that's when you give it the authorization um, down below there where it says authorization beer. That's your, your access token. And this access token, it can expire. So depending with how you want it, you can uh, create maybe a try and accept to check if the access token is still working or not. Yeah, so this is the basic initialization of, um, of the API. Now the API is open. We can now access the API, right? So we needed to create um, the endpoint structure of the API so that um, we can be able to, to automate stuff. So um, remember what I told you about the modules. So this one is specifically for you user module, but you can use the same structure for all other modules, video and, and stuff. 
so you you initialize your your client um and then that method that says all it refers to getting all the data uh the all endpoint to get all data within um all user data within um within the grid and then the other one get it refers to um, as it says in the comment we are just getting one user by using the id and then in this same method you can do that for various endpoints that are accessed um that that are through um, the api so you get that um for you can do it for get post and all that stuff um this is the relatively magic stuff which is awesome um now here what you are doing is we are mapping your data so that when you want to access your data you access it as an object right what i mean there is um this is the structure of your data so this is what your api spits out so you just create a class with um all the items that the the api splits out and then you have to be careful because there are items that are not specifically required to have for example um i can choose not to have to put my personal email when i create the the degree account so you have to assign that to to default scores to none then um atras uh that decorator there it's it's a decorator to which allows you to um to create variables with different um outcomes if i may say so yeah uh after that this 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 attribute class is the one that we are mapping to the data and this data attribute this comes from the degree api now you are just mapping that this attributes i want you to map it to the attribute class so that when you spit the data you are now getting a class you are not just getting um the json data and this is now the the get method uh that request that you you get from the api so from the different requests you get get post delete patch etc you can you can do that you fetch the uri uri i mean the um, from the base uh url you'll be just adding the module that you want to access so if it's user if it's video that's what i refer to as the uri the limit that's the limit um structure given by the grid you can um you can set it to 1000 you can set it to 2000 but the higher the limit it means you won't do a lot of requests because you get all the data at once because the data will be paged so yeah that's uh, how you you do your your gets you can do the same for for post and um, delete as well uh the raise for status that comes from um from uh, request it's um, it's very handy then you have to be wary of um your your exceptions or your error handling so um, i won't look into it but i created a degree api uh, class that will handle exceptions um so using sphinx this is a screenshot taken from um, from the documentation of how you can now actually use um the api you just import the api um the uh, the name of the api is actually not recommended um to do camera quest for a library but yeah you import the library and then when you want to use it um when i'm creating a variable called client this is where i define um 
I define the the access uh, things, the client ID, etc. I pass it to to, to that, and then calling uh, the method. I want to get a user. It's simple as client dot users dot get. Then you then uh, pass um, the ID of the client. Um, if you want to get a username, that's now getting specific. You, you have to to take it through um, the attribute. So let me show you how it will look. So yeah, it will look something like this. You are now getting an object, right? And this is very handy because anyone else who uses Python can 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 use this. Um, you can also further down uh, from the previous slide, further down to get specific um, attributes within um, past within your your API. So from here, I I, I fetched my my first name, uh, and this is this is very handy because we are forty thousand people, and you if you try to do that. Using Postman, you won't get anywhere. Um, now, I just want to explain briefly about Sphinx. As I said, Sphinx is it's awesome. It's like writing code. You, you you don't have to do. It's like you don't have to duplicate um, your work. So Sphinx, what it essentially does is it converts your comments into documentation, right? So all those um, doc strings there they are converted into these handy things. And I don't have to do anything. All I need to do is just push it to Git, to GitHub, and then read the docs who fetch the data from GitHub and post it there. So once I'm done with my code, I push it to GitHub. I don't have to worry about the documentation. I'm already done. Again, keeping in mind, I don't have electricity, right? So yeah. It's nice, and if you click on on the source there, you can actually go to the to the degree to the uh, GitHub source code and see the, the the structure of of the code, which is very nice. Um, yeah, you can define a lot of things, and basically, these you'll be getting from degree because they're the ones that limit, let's say, you know, the amount of um, items the limit that you can pass for degree it is a maximum of a thousand so let's go to testing again um, I recommend um, using mocks they are awesome to use and they are fairly easy and you use request uh, mocks uh, this is uh, a screenshot that I took from uh, Anthony source um, Python request deep dive. I really recommend that you take a look at that. So this is how you'll be doing your test. For example, if you can see this, it's similar to the degree API class that that we had before, and so you are not duplicating your your work. Now launching an API, you do that initially when um, when you initialize your data. It's just um, using cookie cutter, right? So, um, yeah, all this stuff, it, it's, it's already done with, um, with Cookie Cutter. And all you have to do is creating, creating the distributions to actually push to PyPy, and you just do that using the command Python setup, um, the first command. And then for uploading, I didn't use setup, I used Twine, but you have to install that using, using pip. And then, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it from me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, any questions? How's it, Ronald? Cool. Um, so sometimes when you building an API client like that, and you get that bearer token back. Are you storing that anywhere? Sorry. So that, are you storing that bearer token anywhere? 
So for future requests? No. Not, okay. Yeah. And then what if that expires? Okay, so I, if I can get back a little. On the first one. So I was saying um, right here, you can, now this depends on you. Uh, after getting your access token that you are passing here, the access token, it can expire. So you can just write a symbol, try and accept to check if the access token has expired because it has got a, a, a time limit. Maybe you would need to check if it's about less than 15 minutes, you want to request another one. So this, the, the, the beer will, will continuously be there because it will check if the access token has expired or not. If it has expired, it will automatically request another one and then pass it there. Sorry, um, not really a Python question, but has the power situation like resolved in Zimbabwe yet, or is it still? Because I see the thermal plants are also not producing either, not just, I mean, I understand that Kariba is obviously impacted by the drought. Right. But then there's the thermal plants um, like Wanki and, um, or oh, used to be called, I think I'm saying it wrong now, but um, yeah, has, has that come right or not really? Uh, it's, um, it's better than um, when I started. Uh, back in March. Now we have like eight hour load shadings. Okay, so um, yeah. Mainly the, the thermal power stations, they, they went down because they were being overused to try to cover up for the deficit which oh, was coming from, from, from Kariba. Kariba. Okay. Yeah. Right. And that like um, pretty much broke down. And just with your own project, um, how do you access the internet? Is it via like, um, like cellular, G, you know, um, 3G? Or um, fiber or? I have what we call Wibronics. Okay. So Wibronics is essentially it uses um, LTE network. Oh, it's LTE. Yeah. Okay. So it's like um, just a modem. All right. And um, you you get access. The 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 speed is as fast as um, fiber. Oh, great, great. Yeah. Uh, and does that stay up during the load shedding? Um, Sorry? Um, does that stay up during the load shedding? Because I believe um, Econet or someone's buying, uh, what's it, power walls from Tesla or something to power their Zimbabwean cell phone network, I think I heard that. Yeah, so um, because of the power crisis, they were very creative. They recently launched a modem that can use um, a battery. And okay. it's really small. It's, it's smaller than my phone. Uh, you can carry it anywhere with you. So, okay. yeah, it's awesome. now much, much easier. Well, that's good news. Awesome. Great. I so we have to end a little bit quickly because we're running late and we need to keep in time with the other sessions. So if this can be a short question. Yeah, um, I come from a JavaScript background and I wanted to actually know about um, cookie cutter. Does it work like uh, your man? that we have in JS for scaffolding your projects? I don't know anything about JS, so I can't really speak about that. Sorry. Oh, the man at uh, the back says You said yes. it does. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thank cool. you, everyone. Thank and you so thank much. you again to Ronald.